G'day guys, my name's Dave and welcome to another Guitars Ready Roast song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to play Last Resort by Papa Roach. And this song has an awesome guitar riff in it, which is a great exercise for your fingers. Now for the basics of this song, you'll need your guitar in drop D tuning. Now, technically, yes, you can play this song in standard tuning, but the guitarist from Papa Roach actually plays it in drop D. So you'll need to take your low E string down, two semitones, to a D note, so it should sound like that. Once you've dropped that low E to a D, we're good to go. The guitar I'm playing in this video is the Fender Player Plus Meteora. If you wanna find out more, there's a link in the description below. If you wanna master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarsreadyhero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or for the beginners out there who wanna improve their guitar, check out Guitars Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. All right, let's jump into the lesson. All right, so let's start with the intro, which is also played in the interlude as well. And it's pretty simple. There's just some power chords that we'll need to play. These aren't your regular power chords though, and I'll explain why in a second. So let's start off with an E power chord. So index finger on the seventh fret of the fifth string and pinky finger will go on the ninth fret of the fourth string. So that's a regular E power chord. We're gonna add one lower note and it's the B note, but at a lower octave. And that's on the ninth fret of the sixth string. And we'll play that with our free ring finger here. We add that into our power chord shape. And then we get that really thick sound. So that's our E power chord. And we're gonna strum that with a down up and quickly just mute it. And you can mute it by lifting your fretting hand or by just using the side of your palm to push down on the strings like that. And then we're gonna move down to a D power chord. So it's the same shape, just down two frets. We do the same down up strumming and mute. And then we go down to the C power chord, which is the same shape, two frets down again. And then we go down one fret. So this is a B power chord and then back up to the D power chord. And that's it for the intro, which will sound like this. And a bit slower. So it's just that one power chord shape, but we're shifting it up and down the neck. Next, we get to the main riff, and this is the funnest part of the song to play and is really just an iconic rock riff. It's also a great exercise for your fretting fingers as well and your picking hand. So let's break this up into groups of eight notes. So for our first set of eight notes, I'm gonna start with the seventh fret of the fifth string, so the E note. And then we're gonna go up to the 10th fret with our middle finger. And that's with an up pluck. Now, throughout this entire riff, your picking hand will need to go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, constantly and that's the most efficient way of playing this riff. So after we go up to the 10th fret, we go back down to 9th fret, and then back up to 10th fret. So those first four notes. And then we go up to the 9th fret of the fourth string, back down to 10th fret of the fifth, down to 9th, and back up to 10th. So this group of eight notes. And notice how the whole time I'm doing it a down, up, down, up picking motion. Now for our second half of this bar, it's almost identical to that first half, except our starting note is different. So instead of starting out on the seventh fret of the fifth string, we're starting on the 12th fret of the sixth string. And we're gonna do that with our pinky finger. And then the rest of the riff is identical, so. For our next section, again, it's identical to the other sections except for our starting note, which is going to be the 10th fret of the sixth string. We're gonna play that with our index finger and then go up to the 10th fret of the fifth string with our middle finger. And the rest of this section is identical to the other sections. And for the final section, our starting note moves down to the ninth fret of the sixth string with our index finger. And that will sound like this. So every section is identical except for the starting note. So the first starting note is the seventh fret, and then the second starting note is the 12th fret of the sixth string, and then we move down to 10th fret, and then 9th fret. Put that all together, and this is the main riff. So that's at obviously a very slow pace, 
but you do need to practice it slowly in order to make it clean and ensure that you're doing the right down up, down up, down up picking. If you're practicing this riff, I would highly recommend that you practice along with the metronome. So I've got a metronome here set at 70 BPM. Now a tip for practicing this riff along with a metronome is that there'll always be a click on the starting note of each section. So 7th fret, 12th fret, 10th fret, 9th fret. But also any time that you go up to the 9th fret of the 4th string, that's also going to be a click. So for example, click, click, click. Click, so on and so forth. And that will sound like this at 70 BPM. And at full speed at 90 BPM. Now when the verse begins, we're gonna play the main riff, but we actually need to palm mute it as well. So to palm mute, you take the fleshy bit of your palm right here and you rest it lightly on the edge of the bridge as you pluck the notes too far in and you won't get any sound. So it needs to be right on the edge of the bridge and you get that nice muted sound. And that will sound like this. The next part to learn is the pre-chorus and it's basically the same as the main riff except we add some chords towards the end. So for the second bar the riff remains the same except for the final note instead of going back up to the 10th fret we're going to just hit an open 5th string. So. And that allows us to get down here and we're going to play that B power chord and we're going to strum that with a down up down up and then up to our D power chord. So the pre-chorus in total. Next we get to chorus one and there's just one line of tab here that's repeated through twice. So we're gonna start with our E power chord. Now we're just gonna continually strum this at 16th notes. So it's a down up, down up, down up motion. So we're gonna strum this seven times and then on the final up strum, we're gonna transition down to the D chord. So one, two, three, four. So on that up strum, we transition down to a D and then we go down to a C for the rest of the bar. Three, four. So first bar. Now that transition chord, the D, is optional. You can just sort of stay on that E if you wanted to, but in the recording, it does transition for that split second down to the D and then the C. So for the second bar, we're gonna play some octave shapes. So we're gonna start with an F sharp octave. So your next finger on the ninth fret of the fifth string and then pinky finger on the 11th fret of the third string. Now what you wanna do is also mute all the other strings on your guitar so that only the notes you're fretting are ringing out. So to achieve that with that index finger, as you're fretting down that fifth string, make sure that the index finger is resting across all those other strings so that they don't ring out. And the other thing that you wanna do is also have your index finger sitting slightly up so that it's touching the sixth string as well. And that way, when you strum all the strings, only those two notes will ring out. So that's our first octave, and we're gonna strum that with a down, up, down, up. And then we go up one fret with the same shape. And then up two frets. And then back down to the starting position. So the second bar. And the chorus in total. And that's just repeated through twice. For the second chorus, it's almost the same as the first chorus, but we have an extra line of tab here. So for the second line of tab, we're going to start with our E power chord shape. We're gonna strum this at 16th notes, just our down up strumming pattern for half a bar. Then we go down to our C. So there's no transitional chord here. And then we're gonna play a G power chord. And to play this, you just need to bar your index finger across the fifth frets of the sixth, fifth, fourth string. 
I'm going to strum that for half a bar. And then we're going to go down to our B power chord. And that's the second half of chorus two, which sounds like this. Next, we get to the bridge and there's just one line of tab here. We're gonna start with our E power chord shape. And again, it's just a constant down, up, down, up strumming motion. We're going to start with a muted down strum though. So on that first down strum, we don't actually fret down our chord. So just have your chord shape ready, but your fingers lifted so that when you strum, it's muted. So after that mute, then on the up strum, we push our fretting hand down and then we strum for the rest of these two beats. So one, two, and we do the same thing for the G chord. Three, down, up, four, and then the same thing for the C chord. One, two, and the same for the B5. And in one smooth motion. So notice how my strumming hand doesn't stop. It's just those muted down strums that add flair to this strumming pattern. The third chorus is the same as the second chorus, so nothing new to learn there. And then we get to the outro, which is four lines of tab here. So we're gonna start off with something similar to the chorus. So our E transitioning down to the D and then the C. And then we're going to do some octaves, but we're not just continuously strumming the octaves. So we start by strumming the octave and then let it go and then hit the open sixth string with the up down. So the first section and then we do the same one fret up with this next octave and then the same two frets up and back to the starting position. So what you're basically doing is fretting down that octave with that first thumb and then letting it go and muting all the other strings except for the open sixth string so that can ring out. So the second bar. So that first line of tab is repeated through twice and then we get to the second line of tab. Now we start off the same way. So we have the same chords. But then we have a short two beat bar where we're just palm muting the open D power chord. So you're gonna palm mute the open strings and just strum this at 16th notes with a Second line of tap. Now when we get to the third line of tab, it's basically the same as the chorus. So we've already learnt that, same as the chorus one. And we repeat that line of tab through three times. Next we get to the fourth line of tab. And to end this song, we stay on the E power chord and we're gonna strum it 13 times. So on the four beat, we hit it and then slide out. So one, two, three, four. And those are all the parts you need to learn for this song. So now I'll be doing a full playthrough of the song and I'll have a vocal track on top for some context. Feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to to practice, play along to, and see how you go. Cut my life into pieces. This is my last resort. Suffocation, no breathing. Don't give a fuck if I get my
Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you wanna grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzerotohero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.